Welcome to Naive Investor. My name is Gustavo Sayani. Today is March 22nd, 2018, and this is our episode number 278. Today's randomly selected company is called Kremer. Uh, I believe we have even made videos on Kremer in the past. Kremer is a pharmaceutical company, so it has a consumer division, a hospital division, uh, it says it has a diagnostic di division, industrial division, and it talks about uh, exports. Uh, so a pharmaceutical company overall. We have numbers from uh, full year numbers for, from 2016, and that's as far as we got. So today, we'll try to get a full year's uh, worth of information for 2017. And indeed, it seems like we'll be able to. So I'll do a couple things here, uh, just some housekeeping. So I prefer, I've been adding links here. Open a row for 2017. So this is the PDF. So we have consolidated information. And as always, we'll start from uh, debt, net equity, just the overall debt situation for Kremer. Um, so their net equity right now is at 168 million. So it's gone up. Uh, their liabilities, so we add current liabilities to total liabilities. So passivo circulante is current liability, so three, two, one, plus another 182, so 503. Oops. Um, by 18, uh, where net equity went up by 15. So the ratio will, will have lowered by a tiny bit, so let's see uh, loans. So we can he see current loans here, 146. I also like to see, you know, at least these three years. So it's down from 2016, but way up from 2015 still. And non-current, 157, 303. Again, so it's up from 2016, but way down from 2015. So overall, I think their total debt is down when compared with 2015, which I didn't write down here, but it's okay. For now, it's it's all right. So their debt to equity is at 1.8, so far outside our acceptable range of debt to equities, which is from 0 to 0 0.5. Anything above 0 0.5 starts getting dangerously, dangerously high, carrying too much debt. But we'll go on just getting numbers because things uh, change over time, sometimes for the better. So current ratio, current assets, 394 divided by current liabilities, 3 to 1. So it's at 1.22. Again, it's, it's better than last year, but still under our minimum level of safety, which would be 1.5 there. So we have 1.5 times in your pocket the money that you know we will have to to pay out in your you know as you go out of the home. Of course, for the company this means 12 months. So earnings. So they posted earnings of 14 million. So this so this is interesting because. They say they posted earnings of eight in 2016. So uh, let me update this. Uh, okay, let's see. There's some bug with, uh, and this is a very dangerous bug because this may screw up our. Yeah, I don't know what's going on here, man. 
I have to see, but at least, you know, it doesn't seem to, to distort the number here. So, this is a very strange, very, 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 very strange. Okay, I won't, you know, solve this in the video, but, you know, this is why we should be really extremely careful. So, uh, after adjusting for inflation, it's still 14 here. And let's look at, I never got to, to looking at free cash flow because mostly because of the debt levels, I'm sure. But now I'm just trying to, as I'm getting faster at finding these numbers, I'm just trying to do a lot of them. So uh, free cash flow, operating cash flow plus investment cash flow, which typically will be negative. So 66 minus 9, 57. Uh, for 2016, let's do this. Minus 6. Minus 3. This is easy. Minus 9. Operating cash flow. For 2015. 14. Investment cash flow minus 19. So minus 5. So we see here a company with negative free cash flow. We see the same problem happening here. Not good. Uh, but also we can update our averages for the most recent 10 years here. So average for 10 years. So as a matter of fact, the multiple here is not that bad. Uh, price to equity after adjusting for inflation. What is bad though is the debt. And sometimes, you know, their, their net equity may be understated and we may miss out on opportunities. But we can compare the 10-year uh, average with the debt size. So it's a ratio of debt to earnings, right? So their debt is 303 and their earnings are 30, let's say. So... Uh, Considering that things will stay the same way and they decide to pay out their debt, it would take 10 years worth of their profits to pay their debt. So to, uh, it's a long time, isn't it? You know, 10 years out of profits. So, you know, you don't do anything. You don't, uh, you know, you post no profit to pay back your debt and still it takes 10 years. So. This is why this company, you know, is not, for me, is not a candidate for further analysis at this point. Uh, there may be a situation where people who really understand the operation of pharmaceutical companies may find opportunities here, you know, so to be more of an activist uh, and, you know, turn turn this situation for the better uh, but you have to know your limitations and I certainly have no chance of doing that at this point in my life that's why I, you know I, I won't invest in Kremia so this is it for for Kremia uh, and we'll come back with a different company in our next episode thanks so much for watching I uh, invite you to watch our past episodes we do have 277 more I invite you to watch our future episodes. And as always, uh, drop me a line if you have questions, suggestions, criticisms, uh, and especially if you've spotted mistakes in the analysis. Have a great day.